Hi, thanks so much for coming. Um, let's see if this will work. Yes. Um, when when I got here, my the the first curator I worked with, I have a huge amount of text sketches and files for paintings, and um, the curators have themselves been deciding how to display them. But I like I've never kept a diary, so it's pretty intense <laughs> what's in there. Like I, it, it's fun for me to see what they put out. But when I got here, Taylor. <laughs> she was like, so why do you think Thunder Bay and Texas are hell? Because <laughs> I guess one of the notes, it says uh, Thunder Bay and Thunder Bay is hell. Tex oh, there's the microphone. Thunder Bay is hell. Texas is hell. So I'm really glad she asked because I, I really love Thunder Bay and I, I'm from Texas. I came here, I came to Canada when I was 13. Um, so that was just uh, that was a uh, a project I was planning where I was like, how do you combine two places? Maybe you you locate them in the same place. Maybe you locate them in hell. So I was trying to think about two places I love and how you connect them. But all of the notes are like that. None of them are real. <laughs> I'm very I I don't know what's in there. But if you have any questions about the uh, of, about what I said, you just let me know. I think I trash talk someone else in there too. Um, so I'm going to talk, but uh, but absolutely feel free to ask any questions, especially if uh, anything gets confusing or I don't explain things properly. Um, so this is. Uh, so those text sketches, I use them quite a lot for some of this work, but I'm, I'm just, tonight I'm just gonna be talking about um, the later work in here, the work that started around 2016. Um, and for that work, uh, it's almost like I only had one note, and it was this note that was hanging up on my wall for a long time. And it, the, the note didn't even say anything interesting, but it, it held a lot of promise to me. And the note was talking about time. And it was, it was based on this image that, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen this before, but it was from Pompeii, from the, about 200 years ago, an archeologist poured plaster into some of the volcanic volcanic ruin and found all these people. Uh, I just saw the image really briefly, but so I just have a tiny little note here that says, think about time. And later I painted <laughs> that note. Um, but I was, I was pretty interested in this idea of finding something rather than making something. And this idea that uh, there's this person from 2,000 years ago um, that, that is suddenly here. It, and it, it just, to me, there was something very puzzling about it and something on the tip of my tongue. And the way, the way I make art, um, I'm a bit more intuitive, like I wish I was someone who was like, I have this to say and I have this to show. Um, but where my talents lay a bit more is like trying to solve some mystery and trying to figure something out. And the best way, the best way I've always thought of it is like you throw sand at something that's invisible and you start to see it by um, seeing the edges of it as you throw sand. And that's how I picture painting to be. So this painting came a while later, but I didn't need to paint that person, but I, I was like, okay, like, what do you see today? What do you see this afternoon? Um, 
but also when I started these paintings, I, I, had, I suddenly just had this sense that I couldn't see anything and I couldn't think. <laughs> so it was just like, I'd never really noticed my environment and I never really thought about my rooms, like I've never painted a room before. Um, I live in a crappy house. It's fine. Um, but suddenly I just, I felt like, I didn't even feel claustrophobic, I just felt like brick wall. Um, oh, I'm on the wrong thing, one second. For some reason, I can't see. Sorry, my uh, for some from some reason the screen share is making me not be able to move this properly. Okay, I'll just go back manually. So one of the first main paintings I made was this, and I just, um, I it, like instead of sort of thinking more complicatedly, I was just thinking storm, storm, storm. And I went, I kept going down to the water, and I made a friend take me out in their little boat during a storm, and <laughs> I just, I think I just needed to be in the water. Um, but I painted this and it wasn't quite right. Um, and a few years later, I painted this and I was like, oh, I'm making the same painting. But there was something about this one that was more right in a way. And it was, it was I think before, I always loved paintings because it was like a way to get more space. But, uh, but suddenly I was like, oh, paintings can also hold a tremendous amount of time. And um, even though uh, this also could hold time, this one, it, uh, it just felt as expansive as sometimes artificial depth feels. Um, so this is, I've never shown like what I paint before, but I thought it might be fun to show what, what I was looking at. So this, so this is a tree across the street from me, and I was just like, tree, <laughs> tree. And I, did, I really didn't want to paint a tree, but I just was so obsessed with this tree. At one point, like a vine started growing on it, and I snuck out in the middle of the night to take the vine down. And I have like, I have like over 300 photographs of this poor tree, <laughs> and, then, and then I started painting it, and of course it, di it started dying. So now it's barely there, but um, this was this was one of the very first paintings I made for the series, and also again that sense of like, oh, I can't I can't see anything. And at, at one point, um, the there was a window, um, but I painted out the window and I. I thought, oh no, the depth needs to be in the table. Like everything has to be here. You have to um, be able to find the depth there. Okay, so <laughs> um, so the sort of the way I work is I don't plan I don't plan the paintings individually, but I build a bit of a framework. So I know I know what I know from past series and I know what my preferences are and I know what seems silly to me and what seems important but also there's a lot of inklings and intuitions and de desires and drives um, so part of the intuition was like no no windows but another intuition was no, no corrections so um, 
So I just thought you paint what you paint one day and then what you see one day and you paint what you see the next day and the painting can reconcile that. Um, this was another in intuitive, helpful painting where I painted this early on and I tried to put a figure in the chair and it just was like wrong. Um, and I, I wasn't sure why it was wrong to have a figure there, so I painted it out, but I put a dog in and that seemed fine. <laughs> and I guess a person there, I, I love all these intuitive inklings because uh, um, I feel like they help, um, they help me feel a little bit like I'm following something and I'm finding something. Um, so I think with the, the figure, it was just a bit more like, it was ca capturing a moment rather than an expanse of time. And I'm not sure why a dog doesn't capture a moment, but it, it seemed fun. And I, I was thinking a lot about time, but if you're an investigative artist rather than um, a more of a conceptual artist, I. It's hel it helps to be like a little bit dumb about something, but not too dumb that what you're finding in the end isn't really obvious to everyone. <laughs> um, but for me, time was such a mystery. Like, I was, I mean, I so don't understand time that I like read physics books and I read time management and it's just, it's all like, I'm like, oh, I almost understand it. This was another one where I kept trying to bring the figure in <laughs> and I had uh, hands on the bottom of this. Um, but it was again too fakety fake. It was like, no, 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 my hands are making the painting. I don't need to represent the hands. Um, also with, with a lot of these paintings, it, they just felt like a bit of a, a refuge from, from words and thinking a bit. I just wanted to get w rid of words completely. The, I somehow managed like six years showing these paintings without anyone ever asking me for a title. All of these titles are this desk. The other one was living room. It was like I was like kind of being forced to be in the world. Um, this was also interesting, like how, how does that work if time is, uh, if the water's flowing, but it's still in a painting. It's really fun painting like this because it's just the best thing in the world, like sitting at a table and chair and think, like taking your notes and thinking and trying to get somewhere rather than feeling like you're just producing objects. It's kind of the best part. It's nice to produce objects too, so people don't think you're really lazy. Um, this is another one. This is uh, my front, that's what my front yard looks like. And this is a painting. Let me just fix that. Um, so I started to have a better sense of the work and started to see like you don't have you're not you don't have to be located by time and but also you don't have to be located by place so I, I when I started this painting um, I started first with the flowers even though it was winter um, this is my yard again this is another painting of my yard. Uh, this was an early painting um, where I, it was just a bit more imaginative, where I, where I was trying to figure out how to combine these different elements. And this is a later painting um, that I feel where I captured it a little bit better, like this combination of time and places, too. 
Um, this is the same painting, but you can sort of see how I'm, I'm not planning things. I start with one element and then the next. So I am using my room to paint this, but this is the, I'm using the same stuff to paint this one. These, the smaller paintings were a little more challenging because the, the large paintings really allow that time and space and that exploration and you come in one day, especially when you don't have a plan for the composition, um, it's, it's kind of pleasurable to reconcile those things. But when you're painting small, it's, it is a little bit more confusing, a little more challenging to figure out how to represent time. There's Jean. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd include a Thunder Bay shot. And then this is the painting I made after I came to Thunder Bay. This is my painting of Thunder Bay. Not really, I mean. Um, so I'll show you a little bit of the, the, new, the latest work I just made. It's still based in the series. I, I tend to work like for about four or five or six years on a series until I feel like I finally got there. I'm very slow. Um, but I was working on this series and it was just like, I, I was like, oh, it's so dark, it's so dark. And the, the lighter I tried to make the paintings, the darker they got. Uh, and this one, another, another helpful, um, I was trying to, right next to that fire, I had a little painting of an apple and it was just so wrong. And I was like, is it wrong? Because the apple's representational and the fire's kind of not. And I, I kept, I really don't do any corrections with these paintings. The only time I do corrections is when I know I'm kind of being educated a bit. Um, so I tried like a painting of an apple that was very abstract and that didn't work. And I had, I was going on a trip and I called a cab and the cab was coming in 10 minutes and I was like, oh, it's because like an apple is too much life and this painting's about death. <laughs> and I like ran in and blacked out the apple and then had a very nice trip, all relaxed. <laughs> um, and when I was finishing those paintings, I was reading this book by Rachel Cusk that Penelope and I were talking about just now, but in it, it's a really good book and it's, um, uh, it's about a painter and a writer um, who are kind of entangled in this like Garden of Eden story and and he has a breakdown and can only paint dark things, which was a nice book to read when I was finishing up. And I, and I, you know, we're all so critical of ourselves. I was just like, why am I, I can't even paint like the, the sky, like I can't, and then she wrote it within this novel there was a frigid godliness to it that things lit by the sun do not possess and I was like oh yes that's what I was doing <laughs> completely <laughs> very helpful to do your research and have friends um, so this is another example of that where uh, I knew I wanted to paint a fountain kind of in the yard sort of I was painting a yard with this idea that water was coming and I painted this and I was like, oh, I felt so disappointed because it was, um, it was so dark. Like, it kind of, I felt, I felt kind of sad about it in a funny way. And, and then I was like, well, you know, you're the, you're the artist, <laughs> you can make your own choices. <laughs> so I tried it again and I made it, sorry, I can't get that off. Anyway. Um, so I made it very bright. That's like too bright, but it's a little darker than that. Um, but you can see a little bit how, wh where the planning is. The planning is garden, fountain, and it can look like this or it can look like that. Um, and a few weeks, uh, or a few months ago, I was finally like, I have to call these paintings something. And I was like, rock and tree. I'm going to call them rock and tree. I was thinking, that's nice. It's like, Rock, it's like um, mineral, animal, vegetable, that game where you, mineral, animal, vegetable, like everything is one of those things. And I was thinking, oh, I'm painting. I, like, I love that, that everything's made of atoms, that you can look at a rock or a flower. And 
or a piece of paper and it, none of it has to symbolize anything like it can all be it can all be interesting it can all be atoms so i was just thinking of rock rock and tree because there are no people in it um and i was i knew it wasn't that exciting but i was i thought it was really good and for a logical reason and then <laughs> Just when I was like cleaning up my notes last month, I found this reference to rock and tree like three times, <laughs> which I totally forgot about. So I'll just read it. This is from Ursula Le Guin. Le Guin? Le Guin? Ursula Le, 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 Guin, Le Guin. How do you say her name? Le Guin. Le Guin. Ursula Le Guin, the dispossessed. Um, so this is the young man in the book. What about the book the director had spoken of. Would it be a book of numbers? Would it show how the rock got to the tree? He had been stupid to tell the joke about the rock and the tree. Nobody else even saw it was a joke. The director was right. His head ached. He looked inward, inward to the calm patterns. If a book were written all in numbers, it would be true. It would be just. Nothing said in words ever came out quite even. Things in words got twisted and ran together instead of staying straight and fitting together. But underneath the words at the center, like the center of, a, of the square, it all came out even. Everything could change, yet nothing would be lost. If you saw the numbers, you could see that, the balance, the pattern. You saw the foundation of the world, and they were solid. Check had learned, that's the character. Check had learned how to wait. He was good at it, an expert. Um, so I really, it, it, this actually helped me think of that first image of the Pompeii figure, just that instead of creating something, you're just finding something that's already there. You're just looking for the pattern. And <laughs> I was just at a residency in New Hampshire, and I don't smoke cigarettes, but sometimes I smoke some. And <laughs> I just had two cigarettes when I was there, and I was like, really, you know, it's the woods, you don't want to litter. So I like put these cigarettes off to the side, and there, there had been a mouse in my, in my, uh, my studio. And I was like, that's fine. The, the mouse kind of looked at me in the middle of the night, like, what are you doing here? And I was like, ah, sorry, it's okay, I don't mind you, you know. And after a few days, the mouse left, and I came outside, and they had done this. I don't know, maybe it was someone else. But there was no, like I was in the middle of the woods, but it was like they had placed the shells of the cigarette filters in the center and then the, the filters right over the leaf, right over their mouse hole. And I was like, what the hell? So that's all. Any questions? <laughs> Or did I explain everything? Um, any questions about anything? Yeah. Why don't you sign your work? I am obliged to sign it on the back. <laughs> One of my paintings from my Hong Kong show got left behind because I was out of the country and I had forgotten to sign it. And it was one of my favorite paintings. And they're like, it's too expensive if we ship it and sell it over there. We're going to have to ship it back or ship you over to sign it. And it's, it all seems very silly, signing a painting, but I understand. But can you imagine if you sign the front? Ugh. Remember me. <laughs> <laughs> Any other easy questions about life? Yes. What's your connection with Thunder Bay? Um, one of my oldest friends, Jean, lives here. Is she here? I think she's there. Jean has a lot of old friends, but she's my oldest friend. <laughs> so I love it here. Um, and some sometimes I've stayed at their place when they're out of town. So I've got I started some of this work. Well, I think they were in Finland, maybe. Um, sitting at their nice wood table, thinking about everything. But yeah, you guys, I love Thunder Bay, even more than, even more than Texas. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. It's not a question, it's more of a comment, but maybe you can comment on the comment. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's a it takes a lot of um I've done it for a long time. I was kind of disappointed at first. I'd love to be someone who was like, "Hey guys, look at this." But I know that my work's only interesting if I feel like I'm finding something. Um but the nice thing about that is you're a bit of a better listener and you or at least I'm a bad listener, so I'm a better listener with that. But because I because I took the gamble and tried it once and had faith that all those inklings and all these little tunnels of research and like the 10 books you think you really have to read are gonna lead somewhere. I wasn't sure if they would the first time I did it and I gave myself like three or four years, which was a long time. Um, and, uh, but I was rewarded for that. Like I, you know, when you're, when you're making work, it's like, it's very different from growing a plant. Like a plant has its own DNA, but with work it's so messy that it takes a long time to find the DNA of something that you're creating that fits together and makes sense. Um, but because I did it that one time a long time ago, like I've been working for 25 years, so um, now I, it's very easy for me to have faith that, that I'll find that. So I can kind of relax, especially this past month. I've had a bit of a break, and I'm like, oh, my God, I can. I'm, like, just going down all these tunnels, and I know some of them are useless, but it's so, it's just so pleasurable. It's so much more pleasurable than presenting work, you know, <laughs> as I'm sure most of you know. Any other questions? I think there was, yeah? My main feeling is like get out of the way of the work and don't think too much. So for instance, that painting behind you, um, I was like, I was kind of procrastinating <laughs> and I was like, I can't start this painting until I have a pillow. I need a striped pillowcase. And it was like the middle of the pandemic. I'm like, I can't go to Valley Village. And I was like texting my three closest friends who live near me, do you have a striped pillowcase? And I like waited a week and someone had a striped pillowcase. And then I, so I painted the striped pillowcase and then I painted another pillowcase that was just as fine as the other pillowcase. <laughs> and, uh, and then I painted another thing and another thing. And um, it's kind of a perfectionist way to work to not plan and to not correct anything, but it's very nice because you're slow and you're patient and what you have to do is you just have to respect your brush stroke and not criticize yourself and not really care too much about your own parts of it, you know? Like that's the nicest part when you feel like you're facilitating something rather than insisting upon something. So that's, like I, if I knew what a painting looked like before I painted it, I wouldn't want to paint it. So it's kind, it still at least allows me a fun kind of puzzle. Like okay, I'll put this here now, I have to put something here, you know? Like that, probably the hardest one was that kitchen over there, because I, I started with the sink, and I was like, what the hell do I do now? <laughs> well, so I just made the table really big. <laughs> Anyone else? Oh, good. So what do you think that question means? <laughs> do you see patterns in your work, I guess? Probably what? Um, yeah. Well, certainly with like, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, you want to see interesting patterns. You don't want to see banal patterns. Like, you don't want to see lazy patterns. But uh, for instance, I was away 
like five years ago and I came, I was like in the woods for five, I was in the woods for two weeks and I came home and I had like 500 pictures of tree trunks, <laughs> nothing else, like no pictures of people, no sky, no ground. Um, and I was like, I guess, I guess I'm gonna paint some tree trunks. Um, let me just see. And it was probably like, it was like five years later that I made this. And there's a lot of tree trunks in my paintings and I find that kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I, patterns are like all we have, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if I answered that very well. Any other questions? Yeah. Oh, sorry, the woman. Yeah, I really, I find, I find using other mediums incredibly helpful, especially in terms of like ha learning what the limitations of painting is. So um, every time I do a different medium and I come back to painting, I'm like, oh my God, paintings don't move. <laughs> I am a real moron, you know, like I was like, the first time I did a video project and I came back, I was like, oh my God, paintings are flat. <laughs> um, and I find that really interesting. Like I'm, I'm much more interested in, I am much more interested in like, oh, what can a painting do? What can it hold for us? It can hold more space. It can hold more time. Like what, what can it, you know, paintings do a lot of things. They can do symbols, but I'm not interested in that. Like I'm interested in what, what it can do in these other ways. And for me, that is more interesting than a faithfulness to seeing. So I feel like I'm, I'm kind of learning the consciousness of painting more than the consciousness of my own vision, which is really fun when you've been working with a medium for so long. But yeah, I was in the, when, when uh, this, uh, a curator I was working with in Hong Kong was like, do you, do you have your notes from this show? And I was like, oh, I don't work on notes anymore. I don't like words. And then I was like, oh, wait, I've like written 20,000 pages. It just, they stopped being fragments. <laughs> so, and that was like, oh, because I was doing that, these, these paintings got to be free of words a bit, which is interesting. But I love, I love, I love other mediums in terms of remembering how wildly different everything is and how much how much respect you can give to something that seems very banal you know any other questions yes <laughs> that's okay it was amazing <laughs> It takes the spirit of what? Like, when you're in the creative process, yeah. it kind of just takes over. Yeah. And I'm wondering, like, um, so I think the creative process is really important. Yeah. And I'm wondering if you find that So for me, I'm, I, um, um, I'm not interested in imagination or inspiration, really. Like, I'm interested in, like, if I have faith that I'm going to get somewhere, then I, there is no, there is no greater pleasure than trying to facilitate getting there. So for me, that's like, that's kind of, one of the biggest joys I know in life. Um, what was your last part? <laughs> I 
I feel like I had a question to your last part. Oh, what do you hope it gives to people? So um, that's, a, in, that's a good question, I think, because uh, on, on one hand, I feel like you have, you have arts for art's sake. You're just doing it for yourself, which can be really important. And then on the other side, you're doing it to communicate with people directly, or you're doing it to get, um, to get attention you know and and that can be like so on one side it's like totally for you and on the other side it can be a shame spiral <laughs> and but for me in the middle like it it gives me so much like it's so much nourishment and my hope is that it nourishes others too and that's like that's i think is the sweet spot in the middle of those two areas if i was just making art for myself it would be very difficult i think I wouldn't be interested as much. Um, but even if I didn't show paintings, like I feel so intuitively led by them that I might still make really little ones to like see where to go next. Um, but yeah, that's, yeah, it's, it's interesting. The people don't talk about that so much, you know, that spectrum. I don't know if it's a spectrum, but that's how I picture it. There, yeah, like uh, I, like I'm pretty interested in like great paintings I find in the Goodwill or something, and I'm like this painting is, this painting is a great painting. Like I think good painting is almost it's a bit more like being great at singing, like someone who gets up in a bar and starts singing and they're really good at it. Like a lot of people are really good painters, I think. And but for me, I've just had the privilege of, or the <laughs> um, to to get to go deep with it and get to think about it for all day. Um, this woman I met recently, she was teaching a course on the something like the uselessness of love and other pursuits or something. And I was like, oh, like art and math. She's like, yes. <laughs> But it was really interesting because I never thought about love with those things. So it was fun to think about like, oh, actually the uselessness of it. It, it, it does sometimes feel indulgent and it feels um, like you're just digging a tunnel for yourself to like explore in. But it's also, it's wonderful to have this space that's not complicated and not that's filled with like love and a hope for connection and communication, but it's not filled with obligation. And to me, I feel like that's kind of saved my life a little bit. I mean, I could have, I'm, I'm sort of glad I didn't go into math too, but <laughs> I was always like, why do I love everything that's useless? <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Oh, favorite painting? Yeah. Um, sure. I kind of love this piece, but only because it got left behind. <laughs> um, so this is the painting that got left behind, but it was it was really nice. Like uh, I've managed to not have too much stress about anything the last couple of years somehow. But uh, the curator was like, "Don't worry about it. It's going to be fine." Um, but they did such a beautiful job with this getting left behind because the in the gallery, it's uh, they group together all the very dark paintings, and so your eyes adjust. Um, and so the sort of high contrast paintings, w when they were in my studio, you're like, okay, there's that and there's that and there's that. But in the ga in the gallery, like, it was a bit of a gift that it got left behind. But um, but I I when I made this painting, I was like, oh yeah, that's a good painting. <laughs>
And I'm okay, even if nobody else liked it, I was like, yeah, that's a good painting. <laughs> Any other questions? Life, art, philosophy, politics. Yeah. My studio, <laughs> the garage. <laughs> um, I love, I love an empty room. It's so fun. But yeah, I never feel so attached. I'm not so. I yeah, I didn't even really understand that these were all interiors until they called the show interiors. <laughs> I'm like, what is it about these paintings? Um, yeah, I guess uh, I guess the ground, I'm always, the the yards, and the the. I mean, when you, okay, as as we've all known with the pandemic, like things don't change very much, and uh, so you notice flowers dying in the kitchen table, and you notice. I notice glasses moving around and I mean the yard is like oh my god like things are growing again like it's so but an empty studio with a table with nothing on it where you can start to make a mess that's like that's heaven but yeah it, it is funny noticing when you're painting what's around you and noticing what moves and what doesn't you know This is the only time I painted my studio, my garage, my garage, garage. All right. Any other questions, or is that? I think we're almost at nine o'clock. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, talk about the uh, corrections. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's a really courageous way to do art. Thank you. Uh, it's stressful. Um, do you care to comment on that anymore, just in general, about the mindset? Um. Yeah. It seemed. It seemed right. But I remember, like a year or two in, I was like, Oh, I'm being a perfectionist. But actually, it's not. It was OK. Like, if, if I was dissatisfied or if the paintings weren't good enough for me, um, like, I feel like the more lost I get, the more humble I get, the better the work is. So if I was worried that the paintings weren't good enough, it would be very hard. But I'm like, oh, this is what I did. This is, this is what I could do today. This is what I could do this year. And I just have to accept it. So it's, I think it's a little bit more about accepting, accepting yourself. I taught, um, I taught these two older men, they made me give them an art lesson once. <laughs> it was kind of family situation. <laughs> and they're very smart, wonderful guys. And one, one man just was painting beautifully and accepted his brushstroke. And the other man was like, no, 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 I'm much better than this. <laughs> And he kept like smearing everything out and trying to paint again. That was actually really interesting. I was like, oh yeah, it's, I mean, in some ways, like it seems generous to give more than you are and more than you have. But in another way, it's kind of wasting a lot of everyone's time too, you know? Like it's, it's, it's a lot to like accept, accept what you do and to just give that space and respect and not worry about it too much. Um, so even even though 
so I made a bunch of paintings in 2021 and I didn't have time. I love feedback. I love making things a bit better or making them understanding of people or what they're getting from them. But I didn't have time for that. And I was like, these seem like the most ordinary paintings in the universe. And I was like, if people hate these paintings, that makes total sense to me. <laughs> but it is, it's, it's, it's nice to not be fussy, you know. But it's hard. I've been, I've been fussy for a long time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I still have a microphone. Thanks for having me. It's so fun. I've been in this gallery so many times. It's so to see my friends work here, and it's so fun to uh, it's so fun to see my work here and Penelope for doing such an amazing job and everyone here. It's I had nothing to do with how it was hung, and it's so fun to come in and to get to enjoy it more because it wasn't it wasn't me doing it, you know. So I get to respect other people's hands. So thank you. Now we can have some cookies. <laughs>